for more on what to watch here in the final 48 hours and on Tuesday night. I'm joined by my colleague, NBC News chief political analyst, Chuck Todd. Chuck, great to see you again here it's in good. New Hampshire. It's good to be here. Here we're, we go. We're searching for the energy, though. Yeah, I, well, you don't feel it on the ground you here. You don't. You don't. It is. This is unlike any New Hampshire, supposedly competitive New Hampshire primary we've had. Certainly since I've been doing this professionally. All right. Well, I want to talk about the past and the present. Mm -hmm. To set it up, I want to just remind folks, New Hampshire is the place for comebacks. Let's remind everyone what that looks like. New Hampshire tonight has made Bill Clinton the comeback kid. <laughs> tonight, we sure showed him what a comeback looks like. <laughs> you know, I have so many opportunities from this country. I just don't want to see us fall backwards. He's very likable. I, I, I agree with that. I don't think I'm that bad. Um, uh, you're likable no. enough. Thank Hillary, you so no much. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Let's give America the kind of comeback that New Hampshire has just given me. So, Chuck, a little trip down memory lane there. Yeah. That was then. This is now. You're already saying the enthusiasm feels different, but you've been saying a, a whole lot else feels different here. No, it does. And clearly, if your last name's Clinton or Mc, uh, McCain, uh, maybe <laughs> we should plan on a comeback here. Uh, it's interesting to talk about those moments. A yeah. lot of those big comeback moments happened at um, rallies and debates in the final week of yeah. the campaign. Right. And Governor Haley made the decision to cancel any debates, you know, only if Donald Trump showed up. And I understand the rationale at the moment that she made that decision, but she really took away um, potential opportunities for her to make a last-minute case to these un uh, yeah. undeclared voters. Look, this is the last best chance she has to create um, the conditions that maybe Trump is vulnerable. Mm. He's got to lose somewhere. This was the best possible place you could knock him down. And so to not have these debates, even if they were just with DeSantis, to miss out on these opportunities, I'm shocked she is not trying to do every show that's available to her. She's not campaigning to win. She seems to be campaigning to protect something, and I don't know what that is right now. Well, it, it's so fascinating that you raise that point because her supporters have said they're disappointed. Yeah, they're begging her to do they're more. They're begging her to do more. They're begging her to get tougher against Trump. Obviously, we saw her rhetoric mm -hmm. stepped up, rhetoric questioning whether right. he's mentally fit to serve. But it all is going to come down to those independent voters. And it we is. saw Steve Kornacki lay out the fact that actually it's quite narrow if you look at the margin. She had a pretty nice lead with the independent voters. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. I mean, the gap has closed. She's neck and neck with Trump on independent voters. Take us inside the numbers. What would she need to do to she, win independent look, voters? Look, she need well, she needs a big turnout. All right. She needs a high turnout. We she needs something closer to 300,000 total voters showing up. Mm. She needs the ratio of Republican to independent to be in the 55-45 range. Any when it starts to creep over 60, if it starts becoming 65-35, those are just numbers she can't win. And look, it, one of the conclusions I came to after seeing Iowa, and I want to be careful here, it's one state, we had bad yeah, weather, right. but if the electorate truly is being reshaped the way Trump has reshaped it, there are not enough Republicans left for Haley anymore. Mm. The Republicans that were anti-Trump that were available to Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio and John Kasich in 2016, I don't know if they're voting in Republican primaries anymore. That is might be the biggest sort of change in the electorate that we've seen over the last eight years. Well, you take me to your article because mm -hmm. you talk about how Trump has basically changed the Republican Party in his own image. He's also redefined words like conservative. Right. Whatever he's for is now what is considered conservative. Right. Whatever the definition was in 2014 no longer applies. That's important as well. This is what you write, Chuck. You write, quote, if what we saw in Iowa on Monday night is what the GOP electorate is basically going to look like nationally in 2024, and I haven't seen any evidence to the contrary, then the answer is clear. The Republican Party is Trump's party, and any challenge to it has come from a, has to come from a new party on the outside as opposed to within. It has to come from outside. Well, it can't that happen was, from inside the Republican look, Party. Look, this is what Liz Cheney's trying to figure out, right? right what is right. the best role for her to play to, to basically fix the conservative movement, right? To, to, to sort of re-energize re the conservative movement outside of Trump. Can you do it inside the party? I think now, no. He has mm. remade this party right now. He, another nomination makes it very difficult. So I think if you're Liz Cheney, if you're, if you're trying to change the party, change the movement, I don't know if you can do it from the inside. Mm. 
We'll find out uh, as we keep going, because again, we've only had one state, but wow, that was a much different electorate than even what Iowa looked like eight it, years ago. It, it sure is, particularly when you look at evangelical voters, which you break mm -hmm. down in this great piece as well. If you think about what's happened between Iowa and New Hampshire, one of the big pieces of news, one of the big data points is Tim Scott endorsing former President Trump. I typically wouldn't be asking you about an endorsement, mm -hmm. but this endorsement is significant, I think, Chuck, for its timing and for the optics of it, what sure. it implies. Well, because Governor Haley, Tim Scott became a U.S. Senator because Governor Haley appointed <laughs> then Congressman Tim yes. Scott to the Senate. And granted, there was a lot of support for him, and that was where the uh, conservative winds were blowing in that moment when she made that appointment. But I think it Look, I go back to, I think this is an indictment on the campaign that, that Governor Haley has run. She, you know, didn't call up Tim Scott right away after he dropped out. Whatever's going on, she has, her South Carolina politics are not great. Is that her fault? Is that Trump outwitting her? Is that Lindsey Graham outwitting her? I don't know. We can, we can dive deep, but at the, at, at the end of the day, she's not got good South Carolina politics in her favor right now. And she's not going to win the nomination if she can't win South Carolina. Yeah, bottom line, right? Yeah. It all comes down to South Carolina. Chuck, thank you so much. Good to see you. Great to see you. We'll see you, of course, on election night. We'll be up late covering everything. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.